The theme is planting and building up firm faith in Jesus Christ. One way to do that is to be thankful for what you have, not by complaining and counting your blessings. Which brings me to the subject of my speech. I won't complain. First, giving honor to God, my protector and provider, Pastor Tanner, deacons, pulpit ministers, motherboard, choir, musicians, friendship family, visitors, and friends. Good afternoon. When I was invited to be one of the Youth Day speakers about a month ago, I gladly accepted the invitation by Ms. McClain, mostly because I felt like it was the most appropriate answer to give at the time, not giving any forethought about the challenge it would present because it was not something I had to do immediately. Surely it can't be that hard, that difficult, to come up with something a month later. Well, as time passed and the hour drew near, I started to get concerned about what I would speak on or what I could say at the very least to hold the attention of the youth and youth day audience. Fast forward a week. Now, I'm getting concerned that I'm getting what writers must call writer's block. I've got speaker's block. Fast forward a few more days, okay, getting a little stressed, it's time to ask for help. So I asked my father, my biological father. His response was, do what most speakers do in my situation. Ask for divine intervention and tell or relate something about your past, your blessings from trials and tribulations that usually does the trick. Fast forward. So with that notion in mind, I came up with the subject I want to focus on today. And the title is, I Won't Complain. Which also happens to be the title of one of my father's favorite gospel songs. And before I begin my oration, I would like to try and sing a few lines from the, that song because it pretty much sums up what my entire speech is about. The lyrics go a little like this. I've had some good days I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days and 
don't have. Number three, we complain about our parents, not necessarily in that order. Number one, how we look. The commercial media and the society we live in would have you thinking your parents and God must have made a mistake or somehow slipped up when they produced us. <laughs> what I mean by us is you and me. Because everything I'm speaking on certainly includes me. Until recently, the magazines and the media's portrayal of the perfect women were super thin, tons of makeup, designer clothes only, a big bus, and a big caboose. <laughs> we are constantly bombarded with these images to the point that we accept them as the standards that we are all measured by. So if we don't share these same images, we complain. How come I don't have a tiny nose? Or how come my nose is so small? My eyes are too close, my eyes are too far apart, my chest is too big, my chest is not big enough. My head doesn't fit my body, my body doesn't go with my head. My legs are too thin, my legs are too fat, my lips are too thin, my lips are too thick, and on and on and on. I just don't look like the models in the magazines. Stop it. Stop it. You are beautiful just the way you are. The Temptation said it best in his song, Beauty is only skin deep. We have to learn to love the skin we are in and not idolize the commercial images that are keeping the pockets lined of the CEOs and companies who realize our insecure nature and profit from them. No, as you can see, I am not against enhancing what we already have and nothing is wrong with a little makeup, but I don't think we should try to draw an entirely new face we all know some people, not here at Friendship, <laughs> that wear so much makeup that when they take it off, they look like an entirely different person. And it can easily become addicting to the point that they refuse to go out in public without it. Stop it. Stop it. You are beautiful just the way you are. The cosmetic industry, more specifically the black cosmetic industry, is a multi-billion dollar industry. With that amount of money, we can spend on cosmetics, the beauty products we could probably feed the world, pay off U.S. debt, and take a trip to Mars and back. What I'm saying is, we are beautiful just the way we are. And if your main attraction doesn't think so, then I suggest that you suggest that he or she should continue to find their infinite journey to find the perfect person. You are who you are, and you should celebrate who you are. After all, isn't that why we celebrate our birthdays? Yeah. Number two, we complain about what we have. If we don't have a room like the Kardashians, or what we see on Love and Hip Hop, or an expensive car like Justin Bieber, or have fancy clothes like Miley Cyrus or Iggy, and we don't live in a mansion, and we don't carry real Gucci, Michael Kors, and anything else, stop it. Stop it. Half of those designer items are fake anyway. Made in China, who is cutting in on the exploitations that designers are lining their pockets with to finance their lavish lifestyles. This information about fake designer items was exposed recently on the episode of 2020, an investigation of designer invitations exposed in America. We only have to visit a third world country where they still walk a good distance just to get drinking water, or sleep on dirt or grass if they are fortunate enough to have that much cushion to appreciate what we do have. If you have a roof over your head and a room to sleep in with a mattress on your bed, you ought to be able to thank the Lord for that blessing. Most of us have our own flat screen TV, our own PlayStation or Xbox, or both, and whatever the latest games to go with them. A comforter to go on our bed with a theme and matching sheet set, air conditioning, heat, hot water. 
And so, these are the things we often take for granted and we still complain about what someone else has that we don't possess, as if it is our right and privilege for our parents to keep up with the competitive and competitive with the Jones and Johnsons. We all know some people, not here at Friendship, they actually have a mindset that if what they are wearing isn't a designer label, then they don't want to wear it. They will complain if it comes from Walmart, <laughs> Maxway, Dollar General. How did they get that mindset? Much of it comes from the commercial media we worship. But I have news for them. They employ people just for that purpose, to come up with ideas to get us to buy rather our parents to buy their products. It's called targeting and marketing. Now don't get me wrong, I like designer items too, but when you pay $100 for one designer item and you can get three or four items that look the same and just not contain a designer's tag, then that becomes an issue of being a value-minded consumer. It is only when we, as teenagers, have to pay for our own existence, then we can understand the true value of the dollar. Now right there, I will admit again, I am totally guilty of all these complaints. But the older I get, the more I see and appreciate what I already have. Number three. We complain about our parents. You don't understand me. You're too strict. You don't want me to do anything. I can't go anywhere. Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? All my friends are doing it. Everybody's doing it. I didn't ask to be born. Stop it. Stop it. It doesn't matter who your parents are. If they love you and are good parents, they are going to be concerned about where you go, who you are with, they are going to have rules for you to abide by, which will shape and prepare you for the rules we have to abide by as adults. There are some parents, not here at Friendship, who pretty much let their kids do what they want to do. But these are the children who are learning from the school of hard knocks. There's a familiar saying that goes like this. Teenagers. Tired of being hassled by your stupid parents? Act now. Get out. Move out. Get a job. Pay your own bills while you still know everything. A parent that loves you will not let you do everything that you want to do. That's not love. They are our parents first and not like our friendship. My mother, the late Palestine Hall Crawford, was a member of the Friendship Church. And most of you know that she passed when I was a little girl. And so as a child, I would often complain or act out because I was angry that I did not have her around like the other kids who have relationships with their mothers. But as I grow older and the more I mature, I began to focus and appreciate on, on the experiences and times that I did have with her. And I realize that I am still blessed.
There are some constructive challenges out there, like the 30-day water challenge, where you drink nothing but water for 30 days. No tea, no soda, no sugary drinks. I think this is a more constructive challenge. There is a new challenge on Facebook that's relevant to my speech. It's called the 21 No Complaint Challenge. The author is Kirk Johnson, a yoga and tai chi coach. Friendship, my challenge for you is to go at least two days without complaining about how you look and what you don't have. And finally, remember this. When you complain, all you do is change your mood. <laughs> let go, let faith grow, and let God. Yeah. At this time, I would like to acknowledge my family and friends.